Hello, my name is Carl, and this is a tutorial and introduction to PolyDraw, which is a t utility for the Unity engine that allows you to draw in real time or an editor uh, 2D objects. Uh, so when you import PolyDraw for the first time, you should see this folder structure, which is PolyDraw, example folder, and the editor and scripts and icons, etc. Um, so there are two basic components to PolyDraw. There's the runtime and there's the editor which are two separate components that I'll discuss separately. Um, and I won't go into too much detail about the runtime right now, but just to give you an idea of what it is, um, this is the perspective scene that comes with the project. Um, open it up. You can click and drag and create objects that are, as you can see, affected by physics. Um, if we look at them in here, they're assigned a mesh collider in this scene. Um, optionally, you can also assign your own colliders or none at all. These are all uh, settable parameters in the draw script, which if you notice over here to the right, um, these are all settings you can apply. Um, so there are a couple different input types. Um, to get a better idea of that, you can use the orthographic demo, which, while not as pretty, shows you a little more of the features that PolyDraw offers, um, namely the ability to draw with points, as you can see with this example, we have it set to automatically create the object when four points are created. Um, you can also do as many points as you like, and once you get one close enough to the end, it will create the object. So, as you might just see here, um, if the object can't be triangulated properly, it will just not create it. So, okay, uh, moving on to the editor side, which I think most people are more interested in. This is a new scene here. Um, I don't know if you can see the command shortcuts, but that's command M. Open up new scene. Now go to game object, create polydraw object. Um, now, as you'll notice, the scene has automatically made itself 2D and will constrain itself to 2D until you're done editing the object, which you can do or get out of by clicking the lock object or edit polydraw object. Um, this is because there's no real smart way to project these 3D points in 3D space, so I lock it to 2D. Um, it's just easier that way. Makes sense for me at least. Um, anyways, pretty much behaves like the runtime component does. Um, click. It adds a point, click, add a point, etc. Um, you can use these blue arrows to insert points along edges. Um, click, clicking and moving points will move the point. Um, clicking the X will remove points. That looks like a, well, shape. <laughs> so if we lock editing and go back into perspective mode, you can see what it comes out looking like. So this is the default setting, um, about two meters thick, using these uh, brightly colored cardboard shapes, or colors, excuse me. So there are a bunch of features over here that we can talk about. Um, pivot is probably one of the more important ones that you'll use often. So I'm entering a scrap mode to make this a little more obvious. Um, by default, polydraw objects start off at um, a pivot of center with no offset and a side length of 5. Um, but you can change that to have the pivot set in the back or front, or just about anywhere in between using the offset. So if you're doing something where it requires you to move objects around and you'd like the pivot to be Special, somewhere special, this allows you to do so pretty quickly. Um, you can change the side length, and of course this all matches up to how the pivot is set, so if it's at the front, it will extend backwards, and vice versa. Okay, so we'll leave it at center for now. Texture settings, this is a fairly straightforward one, I think. Um, let's go into perspective to see what we're actually doing. You can set different um, materials for these. Um, 
be aware that they won't update until you enter editing mode again. Uh, that probably should be fixed. We'll, we'll change that for the next release. But for this one, just know that you have to enter editing mode for these changes to take effect. Or I guess some of them to take effect. Anyways, uh, the UV scale, another pretty straightforward one. Uh, change the UV scale to have the materials look larger or smaller. Uh, this is just like Unity's uh, material settings down here, with the exception being that it won't break uh, batching because it's affecting the UVs and not the uh, material settings. You can also rotate these materials as you like. So as I talked about earlier, there was the ability to change how colliders are generated, and it gives you three options. None, mesh collider, and when you have mesh collider active, it allows you to set how deep that is and where the anchor is, which could be useful if you're doing some game where perspective is a factor and you don't need the colliders to be all over the scene. You just want to keep it locked to that um, uh, z-axis, excuse me. And there's also the box collider option, which instead of using a mesh collider or a box collider, it creates several small box colliders, long and thin, along the edges of the object. So the reason for doing this is that convex objects do not um, collide with one another. So to work around that, you use a series of box colliders, so a compound collider, and they will then affect one another in a way that you might expect. Um, so that's a neat feature that um, is probably useful for somebody who's doing a 2D game that requires a lot of uh, convex objects and for whatever reason cannot... I'm not sure I was going with that. It's a neat little feature that's there. Okay, so anyways, moving things around. Um, we talked about adding points. You can optionally set a snap value for these points so that they will lock themselves to a grid point. So if I would set to a, a snap meter of one meter, uh, these points will always be on one meter increments. Uh, you can optionally not generate the sides. So again, this appears to be one that we need to be in editing mode to see a change. Actually, this gives you a little better look at what the compound colliders are doing. Okay, let's see, is there anything I missed? Um, if you'd like to move on the scene, the Q shortcut works, or the hand grabber. Um, PolyDraw won't override that when it's in editing mode. You can still pull your way around the scene. Um, to go back into editing points mode, just hit W or any of these keys up here. Works like you'd expect. Okay, um, I think that about sums up a basic tutorial of how PolyDraw works. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, the email is in the documentation down here. Um, Carl at ParaboxStudios.com. I'm happy to answer questions, uh, field, field, field uh, feature requests, um, in general. Well, thank you for taking the time to watch this.